Hey everybody, my name is Daryl Bear, and today we're going to be looking at some of the new tools inside of Maya 2016, specifically the new sculpting tools. So with the sculpting tools in Maya, we now have a very high quality set of brush based tools that we can use to work on top of our base shapes. So this isn't designed to replace a dedicated sculpting or featuring system. It's really designed to help you work with some basic shape authoring directly inside of Maya. And it's very, very cool because Maya has lots of things that it can do and when you start to layer those on top of the sculpting workflows, you can start to get some pretty interesting effects. And I'll show you a couple of examples of that as we walk through the presentation. So what we want to do is we want to use the sculpting tools to add in some target shapes or some blend shapes to our character's head. And we're going to be using the blend shape window to help us with that. We've slightly modified the blend shape workflow to take into account that we're going to be using brush based tools with it now. So let's walk you through that process. The first thing that we're going to do is bring up the blend shape window. And you'll notice that in my scene, I don't have any blend shapes already set up. So what we're going to do is we're going to grab our character's head and we're going to just add a new blend shape to it. And you'll see that there's no sliders here. So this is a little bit different than previous versions of Maya. What I'm going to do is I'm going to start adding in new targets. And these targets are going to receive that brush-based workflow. The targets are actually just deltas. So this makes the file sizes very small. It makes the file I.O. much faster. At any given time, if you wanted to get a true piece of geometry out of that target, you can just click the Generate Rebuild Target Shape from the slider. So it's a pretty straightforward workflow. So what we've got set up now is, is a bunch of sliders ready to receive some brush-based information. So we're going to go ahead and just click the edit button on one of these sliders. That makes it live. It's going to receive all the information that we do with the brushes into that slider. So we'll go ahead and we'll just double click on our sculpting tool. And it will bring up the tool options for this. This again will look pretty familiar to anyone who's used Mudbox in the past. It's a very similar tool as to what you would have had in Mudbox. So we've got obviously the ability to adjust the overall shape of the tip of the brush. We can add some stamping in the form of a bitmap on that brush. So lots of control to adjust how the brushes are going to work. When you're working in the app, you can also use marker menus to quickly change between these tools. So if I right mouse click on top of my object, I can turn on the wire display, turn off the wire display. I can jump from my sculpting tool to my grab tool to my last tool. So we've put most everything that you're going to be using often in the right mouse click. Shift right mouse click allows me to switch between all the different brushes that I have without having to go up here to the top bar. So what we're going to do is we're going to just add in a little bit of style to our character's chin. And I'm going to turn on my mirroring to do that. So we're just going to say mirror across the x-axis. Let's go ahead and just give this a little bit of magnitude. And I'll just brush in a, an influence or a tweak to this guy. Now that was done on the slider. So at any time, I can now start to use a slider to adjust and see what the overall effect of that brush-based tweak has done. Pretty straightforward. So what we want to do now is make a new, a new blend shape. So what we're going to do is we're going to zero that one out, click edit on the second slider, and I'm going to use the grab tool to just add a little twist or a little bit of lift to my character's lip. So I'm going to go ahead and turn mirroring off. I'm going to right mouse click and just jump over to my grab tool, and I'm just going to pull that lip up there. Now if I hold my control key down, that gives me a modifier of the brush. So if I'm in a, like a sculpting brush, like a, a push or pull brush, the control key will do the inverse action. If I'm in the grab tool, what it does when I hit the control key is it enters into a rotate or a twist. So if I hold control and then just move left or right, it's going to allow me to twist or, or spin around the point of where that cursor was. So pretty cool function. So the next thing that we want to do is make another slider it's going to give me a little lift on one of these lips. So if we go ahead and go back into edit our, our third slider, and I'm still in the grab tool, and I start to pull this lip up, you'll see that it's pulling the top lip and the bottom lip. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to switch my fall off. Instead of being a volume based fall off, I'm going to do a surface based fall off. So that's going to allow me to grab just the top part of that lip. So again, it's taking um, things that Maya could always do, volume based fall off, surface based fall off, and putting them in conjunction with the brush based workflows, and it really starts to show you the power that we have when we're doing some basic um, editing of our base shapes inside of Maya with these brush based tools. So the next thing that we're going to do is look at an example of how we're going to use the brush based tools in conjunction with the deformer. So let's say I wanted to give my character a slight change to his eyebrow, you know, his forehead or something like that. And if I do that kind of in a standard sculpting system, the other objects aren't going to really have any, um, any effect, right? Like if I, if I lift that up, that eyebrow doesn't go along for the ride. So what I want to do in this example is make those eyebrows have a relationship to that underlying piece of geometry, the underlying head. And we can just use a simple wrap deformer to do that inside of Maya. So we'll grab our eyebrows, we'll grab our, our character's head, 
We'll jump over to our rigging menu. It's worth mentioning that the user interface inside of Maya obviously looks a little bit different. It scales to 4K really nicely. The icons can scale up and down based on the DPI of your monitor. We've also taken the opportunity when we were refreshing the user interface and making it a little bit more modern or current to reorganize the tools and, and kind of tidy things up. So all the deformation tools now live underneath the rigging menu set. So we'll jump over to rigging, we'll go to deformer, and we'll just do a quick wrap deformer on that guy. It takes just a second to do that. So now, if I jump back into my sculpting tools here, and we'll jump into that grab brush one more time, and I'll just increase the brush size pretty big here, and I'll just grab this and pull this up. You'll see that I'm pulling that piece of geometry when I let go, then the, the wrap deformer goes and pulls that second piece of geometry along for the ride. So that's just a simple example of what happens when you have sculpting tools combined with all the other great tools that Maya has. And that is what we've done for 2016. Thanks a lot for taking the time to check it out. Cheers, everybody.